Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, good morning once again. Good to be with you. I was just thinking if you could pray for the free Anne's. We've got Anne, Anne and Anne at the moment uh, who could do with our prayers, haven't we? So I wasn't going to call them the free amigos, but, uh, but if we can pray for the free Anne's, that'd be good. And it's good to be with you this morning. Come to worship. Thank you for those who inquired after Susie's well-being. She's doing well after the small operation that she had yesterday. It's easy for me to call it a small operation, isn't it? She may have a different opinion. But, uh, <laughs> but thank you for asking after her. Let's come before our God as we celebrate communion together. And we pray together. Almighty God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So as we come before a God who loves us so much, he's keen to forgive us, we pause and reflect upon our lives. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all as we confess together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll stand on all of our behalf as we worship using the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. 
For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed worshipping using the Gloria, because of course, we're heading into Lent, and so that'll be the last time you get to say that until Easter, won't it? You will look at me puzzled. That's Ash Wednesday next week, isn't it? Second next week? Caught up on you, isn't it? <laughs> if, if the church warden wasn't expecting it to be Ash Wednesday, it's definitely caught up on you. So there you go, heading into Lent. Okay, we come to our collect, which is our prayer of the week. And before I pray the collect, a moment of silence to you, say your own prayer of thanks to God. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, Jeffrey's going to bring our reading for us. So it's nice to have you read, Jeff. Reading is taken from Colossians 3, reading from Par 1, 3, 1 to 17. Rules for holy living. Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. <coughs> Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in, in you richly as you teach and admonish one another which with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So I have a bit of it, a bit more to read, haven't I? That's 
Okay. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sorry, I was a bit hesitant about that. No, I'm not at all, Jeff. Thank you very much for stepping in the fray. I'm going to be reading from Matthew because we're working our way through Matthew, chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 21, which is the parable of the unmerciful servant. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the master, since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him, Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, Be patient with me, and I will pay it all back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, in Christ. And so, Father, as we read this very clear parable, may we know your love, may we know your wisdom for our lives. Amen. Well, it is very clear, isn't it? I don't really need to expound too much on this parable. I think it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? So, uh, but one of the things I love... About, or one of the things that's interesting about this parable is Peter goes to Jesus and says, how many times should I forgive my brother and sister? And perhaps one of the things we miss easily is it looks as though he's talking about his immediate church family because brother and sister would normally refer to that, wouldn't it? It might refer to literally to our blood family as well, but this parable is probably about us, how we forgive one another. And of course, most rabbis at the time would say that you forgive someone three times before you give up on them. And Jesus, as ever, comes up with this ridiculous figure of 77 times, which basically is saying, you've got to keep on going. Which is hard, isn't it, when it comes to forgiveness? When I'm sure we, even then, I I crossed my arms. Did you see that? That was unnatural. Because forgiveness is difficult, isn't it? So, uh, and I just wanted to be clear, just because you forgive someone doesn't mean it didn't happen, doesn't mean there aren't consequences to what happened, Um, and doesn't mean that you necessarily will be joined with them again. You may still have to keep away from that person who you have to forgive. But if you can, the commandment seems clear, doesn't it? If you want to be forgiven for all that we've been forgiven for, which is a huge amount, um, then we should seek to forgive others. Interestingly, in the parable, um, the amount the first servant owes the king is a ridiculous amount. It's something like five billion pound. 
and the amount that the second servant owes him is something like £7,000. So it's that sort of stretch that Jesus is saying. It doesn't mean it's easy, though. But then life sometimes isn't. And no one ever said following Jesus was going to be easy, did they? Let's pause for a moment and uh, reflect, perhaps, back on our lives. Um, and it might, this might be painful, but I understand that. But I wonder if there's anyone in our lives that we need to forgive and bring to the table this morning. So we'll just have a quiet moment. We won't, I won't do anything after that. We'll just have a quiet moment for you to come and me to come before God and ask him, is there anyone in our lives that we need to forgive? I said I appreciate that's not easy um, if you need to have a chat with me then I'm available if you find it easier to chat with Sandra I'm sure Sandra would equally be available but we come we come forgiven to the table so let's uh, say together our creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Normally I would sit down or I'd kneel down and pray for us, but again, I'm just feeling that we might just leave the silence this morning. Let's just, we'll pray. Uh, but we'll pray amongst ourselves silently and we'll just let the silence hang for a while. So Father, as we come before you with our own prayers this morning, for the world, for ourselves, for our country, would you hear us?
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us pursue all that makes a peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, and he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine 
may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, or honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we call all, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And so friends, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for all God's people, I receive on behalf of all God's people. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for all God's people, I receive on behalf of all God's people. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that we are forgiven because of the fact that you hung on the cross for us. Having received your body, may we walk in that forgiveness. Amen. And we say our prayer of thanks together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. 
May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, my friends, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in love to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.